Laboratory 13 uses floral pigments as litmus tests for acids and bases. I refer to this laboratory as chemistry from the flower garden into the kitchen. Some of the questions we'll be exploring are, what floral pigments make the best detectors of acids and bases? What substances are acids, bases, or neutral? This laboratory explores whether flower petal pigment solutions are good indicators of acids and bases. The flower petal pigment solutions are produced by boiling flower petals in water. If a flower petal solution is found that is a good detector of both acids and bases, then that solution will be used to determine whether unknown substances are an acid, base, or neutral. Flower pigment solutions are also called floral pigments in this laboratory. So the hypothesis we're really looking at is whether we can use flower pigment solutions to detect acids and bases, and then if we can, using that to analyze some unknowns as to whether or not they're an acid or base. In the English language, acids are said to be sour or tart. Bases are often said to be bitter. In the residential version of this lab, there are really three phases. In the first phase, you gather flowers or bring flowers to class with you. Preferably bring flowers to class with you, as quite frankly, on campus right now, there are just not that many flowers. Pretty much none. We took out most of the flower bushes. We'll be using the flowers to generate a fluid that we hope will detect whether some liquid is an acid or base. Uh, a previous video has helped you, I hope, understand a little bit about acids and bases. In the second part of the residential laboratory, we determine which flower is producing the best fluid for determining whether something is an acid, a base, or possibly neutral. In other words, we'll boil the petals and look for a color to come out of the petals. Some petals, when you boil them, don't produce a color. So you're looking for a flower fluid which shows a distinct and different color change when you test it. So we'll boil it and we'll test it. Now in this lab, we'll use lime juice as our known acid. Limes, limes fruit are uh, acidic. They contain citric acid. And we'll use baking soda as our known base. Baking soda is a little tricky. If it's not fresh, it doesn't work very well. In phase three, you will use that flower fluid that you found that works to detest other liquids to determine if they are an acid or base. When we are working with the test tubes, be sure to rinse them well between tests. And some of the unknowns are, while household items are still actually toxic and some others could possibly irritate your skin. But everything we're working with is, in this lab is usually a household chemical of one sort or another. You can see some of the equipment, and you'll see some of that later. Phase one, if you don't have a flower, you can go try to find one, but usually in phase one, I, I ask that students just bring flowers with them. It's much easier, and as I say, there's A, there's few flowers on campus, and B, the ones that are on campus don't actually work that well. The first part of the laboratory section, laboratory phase two here, is to find a flower that works. So we're going to boil a flower, and we'll test it with an acid, the lime fruit juice, and we'll test it with a base. Note that you are not testing to determine whether the floral litmus solution is, an ac is acidic or basic. The floral litmus solution is being used as an indicator fluid. Whether the fluid itself is acidic or basic is not determined by this laboratory. But in general, the floral litmus solutions are near neutral. In phase three, we'll test some household substances to see whether they are an acid or base. And there'll, uh, there'll be some different things in the lab that day. This will generate a second table of results for the household substances, noting the color change and whether that means it's an acid, a base, or neutral. If you have a good floral solution that changes color for acids and bases, then a neutral will be indicated by no color change. But finding a flower that works can be complicated. And then the discussion, you can talk about what flowers if we've got multiple different flowers being used, you can't talk about which ones had the most distinct color change. 
and uh, discuss any difficulties you had. But most of the conclusion is this table of acids and bases. So it's a bit of an introduction to the chemistry of acids and bases and detecting acids and bases. Uh, Hibiscus tiliaceous flowers sometimes work. By sometimes, I mean they work only in the afternoon. Ones picked in the morning don't work. So that's a possibility if you can find them. In this laboratory, I'm going to use Spathic Glottis Placata flowers because they generally seem to work uh, without regard to the time of day or year in which you pick them. There are a number of flowers I already know don't work. These Ixorocase flowers do not work. They don't produce any color when they boil. The colors in them are color fast. This painter's palette also does not produce any useful color. Red hibiscus flowers do produce a color, but I didn't have any red hibiscus to work with today. I've put the purple Spathoglottis placata flowers in a heat-resistant beaker. That's something you would not have, and if you're trying to do this at home, you might have to boil it in some other type of pot. I went outside while the petals were being boiled to collect a lime fruit. Lime is a known acid, and so um, that will be my known acid. You can see that the water is boiling. Be careful, that glass is hot, and the purple color is coming out of the flower. You can see the fluid has turned a purple color. Now, I need a floral litmus solution that changes two ways. Here you can see a description of citric acid briefly. You can go back and pause that to read that. But I need something that will change two ways. So now I'm going to test to see if my floral litmus solution reacts to acids. So I'm just going to use pure lime juice. I know it's an acid because I know it contains citric acid. I do have the advantage at home of having some test tubes around. Uh, so I can, it makes things a little easier, and eyedroppers. This lab would be challenging, I suspect, to do at home. And you can't just put any glass jar on a stove. They will break. That, that, these beakers are very special. They're heat proof. So this is a color that's very close to magenta or fuchsia. It's a color up around 300 degrees on the HSL scale. Uh, I'm going to add the lime juice to one of the two. I'll try to use a white background to make it clear that there's been a color change here. It's gone from one purple to another. Now, it's really hard to see this with the digital camera. One of the things this lab has taught me over and over again is that digital cameras do not have the same response curve as the human eye. So it'll be a little hard to see these color changes. They'll be more obvious in person. But I've now added the lime juice there. And if you look closely, you'll see it's no longer a magenta fuchsia color. It's turned red. It's gone from about 300 degrees on the HSL, hue saturation luminosity circle, the hue, to about zero degrees, the reds. So that detects, this floral litmus solution can detect an acid. For my base, I have some baking soda. The label on the box says it expires today. <laughs> In other words, it's quite old. It's also kind of stuck together. So I'll have to kind of shake it down in. You'll notice that I do that by tickling the bottom. We never put our finger over the top and shake a test tube because the contents could develop pressure and explode out. I get a bit more to fall down inside. But if you look closely, you'll notice that the color has already begun to change. In the background, you can see that fuchsia color, the magenta color. It's no longer magenta colored. This has turned a bluish purple. This is down around uh, 270 degrees now, if you're familiar with the hue circle. And I'll put a little bit more of that, the purple flower solution. So on the right, an acid. On the left, a base. I need a flower that changes for both an acid and a base. 
I can't have a flower that only changes for one. That won't do me any good. And this one changes. And the key is it changes in two different directions on the hue circle. It shifts to a higher angle or back towards zero from 270 to zero for an acid. And it drops back, if you will, uh, counterclockwise from 270 to 300. So that's the baking soda that I use to test for a base. And I do have a color change both ways. Now that I have a known color changes, I can use my solution to determine whether ammonia is an acid or a base. What do you think? Is ammonia an acid or a base? So I'm starting at about magenta, about 270 degrees in the HSL circle. Now, normally we just pour a beaker and use an eyedropper, but I only need a little bit for this, so I'll go ahead and try to pour a little bit in. It's ammonia, and it won't do any real damage to me. We use it to clean windows. If you look closely, you'll see that the color has turned a kind of bluish, grayish color. Uh, in real life, there's a hint of green to it. It's actually swung so far counterclockwise that it's actually heading between the blues and the greens. But the digital camera on my cell phone can't pick up the subtle differences in color. A real lesson for those of you who are digital photographers. Your digital systems miss a lot of subtle colors. But this is not in the direction of red. It's in the direction of blue and green. And so that makes this a base. On the right is my known acid and the just next to it the original color and then the base I like to keep multiple test tubes so I can compare and see the color change differences now here's something called cream of tartar it's used in cooking we use it in certain types of cake rolls and things with eggs its role in those recipes is unknown to me and I don't really know what this stuff is so we'll add it. There's my, keep in mind, that's my original color there. If the color doesn't change, I have a neutral substance. If there's no change, it's neutral. If you look at the bottom of that test tube, though, that test tube is starting to look kind of red in the bottom. Uh, better move that away. It's got a red top. It might be influencing things. It has shifted in color towards the reds. And again, it's hard to see that until you look at the original, but it started off at that pinkish purple, and now it's definitely towards the reds. This is an acid. The role of cream of tartar in cake roll is as an acid. What that does in the recipe, I honestly don't know, but that's what it is acidic. Here I've used a white sheet of paper to try to make a little bit clearer the color differences. But these color differences are far more obvious in person. The human eye can see more wavelengths and react to wavelengths of light better than digital cameras. Digital cameras are really restricted to very specific narrow bands and then interpolating the colors from that. Plus you're also watching this through an RGB monitor which also degrades the color spectrum. So you're not seeing the real color, but it, you get the idea. Well, here I'm going to try some vinegar. Is vinegar an acid or a base? You need vinegar to make sweet and sour chicken and sweet and sour pork. The sour is the vinegar. Acids are sour. The sweet, of course, is sugar. A little mix of sugar and vinegar and have yourself the base for a sweet and sour recipe. So there's my original color, my Spathoglottis plicata, Philippine ground orchid. I know that it shifts towards the reds for an acid and towards the blue-greens for a base now. You see that color change? Which way did it go? Does that mean it's an acid or a base? And again, it's useful to pull up the old tubes. Keep track. Somewhere in here I get confused. <laughs> There's the uh, original color. And that tube I just added, that magenta purple color. And you can see that the vinegar has clearly shifted in the red direction. It's a reddish color. And so it is a acid. So this is a bit of an introduction to 
the things that we can test and detect, the acids and bases. Let's do another one. And you can use pretty much anything in the house you want to add to something with, with some cautions. So in the laboratory, we'll be a little careful. But this is um, some detergent uh, with softener and all sorts of other ingredients. I have no idea what will happen. I've put some on my knife there. So I'll go ahead and prepare a clean test tube. We'll be doing a lot of washing and rinsing of test tubes in the residential lab for this one. Uh, but I've already rinsed this. And there you can see the original color. And I'll try to get the detergent to go down into the test tube. Again, I'll mix it by tickling the bottom. But you can start to see something's happened in there. Besides the fact that it's getting full of detergent. And here, there again, it's very difficult to pick up what's happening. What you're seeing on, on your screen is probably a grayish color. But in real life, it's a blue-green gray. And I've tried to use a white sheet to pull up that color. But it's really hard for the camera to see the real color here. It's a good reminder that you just don't see the same colors on a screen through a camera that you do in real life. But this is shifted in the direction of a base. And this is more obvious in person than here on this screen. Here I've pulled up the other ones to try to give you an idea that it's gone in the same basic direction. And now I'm kind of confused because <laughs> I get them, yeah, get a handle on everything. And then the acids, well, they would be on the, right. I decided I better do another one to see if the color shifted in that, you know, which one of those two is, as I said, I got myself confused. So that pinkish one is actually an acidic one, and there I flipped them around. Yes, no sleight of hand here. No facility with, with these sorts of things. But those middle ones there are the original, that middle purple is the original color, and the pinks and reds on the right are acidic. And then the base. I, I think the one test tube might, might be contaminated. The fourth from the right might have gotten a little bit of acid in it. The original color is that purple, magenta-ish color. But uh, I may have gotten confused. But that said, if it goes red, you're looking at an acid. And if it turns to the blues and greens, you're looking at a base. Uh, that's just my setup uh, there and some of the other ingredients. There. And we've got the uh, cream of tartar on the right because it's an acid. There's the vinegar. It's an acid. Because it changed the same color as the lime fruit changed. We, the ammonia, that turned out to be a base. Fit the detergent in there. That's turned out to be a base. And so we can detect acids and bases with our floral litmus solution. Again, we're not sure whether the floral litmus solution is an acid or a base. It's probably neutral. But it does allow us to detect acids and bases because it has two color changes. One to the, for a base, base is turning the bluish, greenish, grayish. And uh, the acids turning that reddish color you see on the right side of this image. And again, the colors you see will differ in real life. Lab report will be a little different. There's no graph in this report. The first table will be the color changes for your successful flower, the one that changed both for an acid and base. What color does it change for an acid? What color does it change for a base? There's generally a pattern similar to the one that I saw in my laboratory. And then a second table where you will identify whether unknowns are an acid, a neutral, or base. I didn't demonstrate any neutrals, but neutrals are rather unexciting. The color stays the same. It might get fainter. It might get lighter because you've diluted it. You've got some clear solution you've added to it. It might get lighter, but the hue doesn't change. The hue angle doesn't change. And that's why chapter 10 and hue angles were so important. They don't change when it's a neutral substance.